which is uh, launched for this uh, period, but not only the coalition period we have now, but uh, longer term, as you can see, a vision up to 2050, um, with four major pillars in there, uh, meaning health, social well-being, climate adaptation and nature. So no mono, but multifunctional green uh, in the public space. Um, um, about the about the process, this started beginning at the beginning of 2018. Uh, this idea was launched to start this green vision uh, with a group of maybe five colleagues of mine uh, who started this, not me, um, but four great few great colleagues. Um, so in 2018, at the end, there was a coalition agreement on this, um, and uh, this fall. Uh, the establishment by the city council is expected. So in total, uh, this will probably take almost three years uh, to realize. Um, and the green agenda took about two years. A good thing to know about Amsterdam is that we have a pretty left wing green coalition here. So it's um, so to say rather easy to uh, to achieve this. Uh, but I must also say short notice. Um, they are mainly focused on sustainability and not necessarily always on green. Um, so there's also challenges in the process, uh, of course. Uh, how to invest the money, uh, which is 35 million for this coalition uh, period now. Uh, but also having the conversation with our colleagues, we have uh, other uh, space claims in the uh, public space and not always convinced about the, the economical and other values of, of green health values, etc. Um, so repeating the message over and over again eventually became a, a great success. Um, it's also co-production with citizens, organizations, institutes, universities, as there is so much knowledge there. So uh, during the last one and a half year, uh, there was a lot of participation uh, uh, going on to realize this. Um, yeah, so I think that is uh, uh, the summary of this uh, sheet. If you have more questions about this, you can also contact the, the project manager. Uh, the email address is written in this sheet, Geertje Weite, that is. So, Focusing on climate adaptation and uh, a bit more, of course, we know that we have heat stress going on within our urban area. It can be a difference of seven degrees Celsius uh, whenever there's a lot of concrete versus the parks or even better, the, the rural areas, of course. Um, so we are taking notice of that and all European cities know that it rains a lot heavier and in more intense. Uh, this was a cloudburst in 2014, uh, but this still happens. This happened uh, two weeks ago in Amsterdam, um, so I, I could have taken the same picture. Uh, keep in mind uh, the picture of on the right below. That is a flooded station in Amsterdam, one of the biggest stager, uh, stations. Um, that was massive uh, economic damage, of course. Um, yeah, so keep that one in mind. Um, also part of this green vision is our uh, handbook on nature included building. Um, so here's the term again. Uh, Amsterdam has this handbook in which 20 ideas are uh, written out on what you can do in the public space, but also uh, building wise to invest in biodiversity, but all obviously also in the other uh, co-values that are there. Um, and the graphic you see on the right was designed by Jorine Nordman. Uh, I heard she's in this uh, program as well today. So all credits to her for this uh, um, graphic. Uh, this is also available in English. So if you Google this, you can find this. It's to inspire developers, architects, our own uh, uh, landscape designers, urban planners, and attached to it, to this, there's a green point system, which we use in the tender system. We have um, one end for architects or uh, developers want to invest in Amsterdam and develop in Amsterdam. They need to do something for nature included building. Um, 
part of what you can do is uh, investing in the facades. Um, the thing in the middle looking like a letterbox is uh, made for bats and you use it pretty quickly. So um, you don't necessarily need to see what you introduce in the facade, but you can also show it um, like this. Um, and bats are very uh, hand handy for uh, for us humans as well, as they catch an average amount of 3000 insects per night, uh, mainly mosquitoes. So I would say that there's a proper nature based solution. Um, I couldn't resist to mention something positive about the bats uh, just here. Um, also in the book, the diversity on different kind of green roofs, but also brown and blue roofs. Uh, in the public space, the natural playing grounds for, for children, uh, the bioswales, etc. So it's to inspire as well. Um, as an example, uh, this is where real estate was developed in uh, near Sloterdijk. That's also near the station I just spoke about, uh, where all of this IDs were integrated by a landscape architect company where we work together with pretty often. Um, and like I just said, I just mentioned the natural nature based solution uh, wise profits from animals, but also the, the great tit upright. Uh, we now know by uh, scientific research that whenever they breed there commonly in a certain area, there's 60 percent less of the caterpillar of the oak procession processionary um, moth. I should say, and that is a big problem in Amsterdam, but I know also in London and uh, Berlin, uh, for example, I don't know if they are present, but nature based solution there. Also, we invest uh, more in uh, ecological uh, maintenance. Um, so we transform it uh, from very intense uh, maintenance to less and different. Uh, it's now 52%, but the aim is 75. Uh, as part of this green vision. Um, also good for, of course, it's good for the insect decline. Um, and in here, other natural enemies of the oak processionary moth thrive, of course. Um, and this is just worth it to, to say having a healthy ecosystem means no plague. So no ticks, no mosquitoes, or at least a lot less. That's a better way to pronounce it. Um, um, Back to climate, um, interesting to take notice of is the rainproof platform we have in, uh, in uh, Amsterdam. Uh, it's a platform that links citizens, entrepreneurs, knowledge workers, the municipality in ongoing projects and uh, new initiatives. Um, so there's a lot of uh, co-production there. And uh, it also has an excellent toolbox of uh, uh, where 55 options are shown on what you can do to make the project uh, you're working on more rainproof. This is also available in, uh, in English. Um, so now upcoming, there's a few examples of nature based solution where health, social well-being and the climate adaptation and nature all come together. Um, so here's the station I talked about with uh, where the flooding happened uh, with the great economical damage. As you can see on the left, this is what it looked like before. It was one great concrete sea. Um, so uh, and then the change started, the transformation. They developed one of the biggest uh, rooftop gardens um, uh, there. Uh, they meaning also rainproof. Uh, co-production as well of municipality and a lot of organizations, the, the ProRail station uh, owner, um, introducing drainage systems with uh, permavoid units where also extra oxygen for plants is uh, to be contained, but obviously it buffers and it stores water. And it has an upward capillary system for dry periods. So this is also a big problem uh, now, of course, not just the wet period, but the dry periods as well. Introduced there, uh, looking like this uh, now. So, of course, this costs a lot of money, but it never got flooded again uh, with the same amount of rainfall, never flooded again after 2015 when it was realized. 
it's now also a place to be, a uh, place to stay, place where you can miss your train. And uh, biodiversity is great there. Uh, it's a buzzing world with bees, uh, butterflies, lots of other insects. So another location uh, in Amsterdam, which is a bit more uh, centrally located uh, in, the, in the center, is very interesting. Uh, this was already a bit green. Obviously, see, obviously you can see that the tree wasn't born yesterday, but it got flooded all the time because it was uh, a few meters below sea level there. Um, so after a heavy rainfall, it was all underwater. Um, so they introduced the bioswales. Uh, you can see uh, uh, one of them. Uh, they introduced about six. Um, and they is also again rainproof. Um, um, in the bioswales, there's a lot of vegetation that can handle dry and wet periods. And the amount of green was doubled by taking away parking lots. Uh, and interesting in this process is that the concept was designed together with locals and entrepreneurs and uh, the municipality. So locals had a lot to say about the uh, the design, which I find very um, interesting. Uh, it's been well used. It's quite hot uh, right now. A lot of children playing in the water and there's also a natural playing ground uh, added. Um, another project. I have many projects. Uh, uh, four more coming up until the end. Um, take notice of the Resilio project, because uh, this is where uh, 10,000 square, uh, 10, square meters of green roofs is added in Amsterdam on different locations in a research program. Uh, so together with the University of Amsterdam, uh, uh, the municipality, but also housing corporations, uh, the functioning and the effectiveness of blue and green roofs, so uh, combined, those two combined, is, is tested. They have a lot of uh, meters there, uh, a rain meter, many other meters, uh, everything they test here. Um, and you can look, look this up at the um, slash smart roof uh, 2.0. Very interesting to take knowledge of because this works really good uh, also for cooling the city because blue uh, a blue system combined with green obviously keeps the city a lot cooler than uh, just green. Um, in the Zuidas, which is our economical district, we have green infiltration zones uh, that are added. Um, they're also in Portland. Um, that's where I know them from, but they're just realized in, in the Zuidas as well, and they look great. Um, used to be all concrete, now it's like this. Um, right next to the houses, so it looks a lot better. Um, and then there's the circle uh, building, uh, which is part of the bank, ABN AMRO uh, uh, bank. Um, and this is public space. So uh, this, this green here on the facade um, and also on the rooftops, uh, but also in the public space there is invested and financed uh, by the by the bank so that its employees can enjoy this healthy inspiring environment in between the boring mortgage advices um, i would say but also for other people that want to join it and there's a lot of insects that join in and um, so it's good for biodiversity and uh, a place to meet up um, better than it looked before also, Zuidas is uh, one of the biggest uh, green roofs in uh, in Amsterdam, uh, owned by Brevast, is a real estate owner. Um, it's six, uh, they added 1,600 uh, square meters of green there. Um, rooftop garden, um, and the subsidy came from the municipality. I forgot to mention that uh, we have subsidies for uh, adding green to your rooftops as well. Uh, part of this, it used to be part of the green agenda, but it's now also part of the green vision. Um, so it's also uh, being used by the people that live there in the, in the near area of this uh, roof. So not only by the, the em employees. Um, so in Amsterdam, we also have quite a few 
uh, to be exact, 10 uh, natural playing grounds in which Amsterdam invests uh, as well. Uh, it's how urban children basically get into contact with nature, which is, uh, is very important in contact with the smooth nude um, here upright. And it also obviously buffers water, makes the city cooler. So it also uh, contains all the other co-profits that are um, that are there. And another thing I mentioned from the health part from the green vision was that Amsterdam invests in transforming those kind of concrete gray looking schoolyards into green oases and playing fields. Um, um, which is interesting, uh, greening the schoolyards. Uh, subsidies are uh, being given from the for the makeover and 80 schoolyards have uh, had a green makeover in Amsterdam um, already. So coming to the last slide, this is like a utopian picture of how the center, uh, the canal district of Amsterdam uh, could look like with the green roofs and the so solar panels, uh, panels, sorry, and uh, urban farming on the rooftops, etc. We don't know if that's going to happen, but that should be the beginning, not exactly the end. Um, yeah, so that's my last slide. Are there any questions? You can also uh, send me an email if you have questions. Um, Thank you Thank very you much, much. Anneke, that, that was fascinating, fascinating. and, and uh, yeah. one, wonderful visuals and uh, very inspiring projects. I think the way you talk through the vision, the policies, even procurement and the implementation of nature-based solutions in Amsterdam is, is very inspiring. We, we've got a number of questions in the chat, which I'll put across. And so if anyone else wants to um, ask a question, either raise your hand or, or put it in the chat uh, for Annika. Um, so I think the first question um, uh, is what, what do you think, Annika, is key to the success of upscaling nature-based solutions in Amsterdam? Big question to start with. Um, I think the key must be the, the people that work for the municipality, because that's where the, the and also, um, well, let's start with my colleagues then. Um, there's a lot of ecologists and green minded people that work for the municipality. So that's where ideas are born. Um, and obviously in Amsterdam, there live a lot of people that uh, uh, are very attached to, to green. They care a lot about green. And so it's not just uh, us. Um, um, how do you say it? Not just my colleagues and me, but it's also uh, the, the people that live in Amsterdam. And then there's the coalition, which is uh, quite green minded and um, um, left wing. So uh, I guess that is. Um, yeah, that's how it starts. That's how it's been born. Uh, uh, seeds are planted easily in Amsterdam when it comes down to these kind of ideas. Yeah. Um, and I guess since the beginning of the uh, 1990s, when the first ecologists and the first uh, green uh, people started working at the municipality, uh, that's when a lot of attention uh, was born for these kind of ideas. And of course, we all know by now that it's so important and uh, we it's been scientifically proven over and over again. And we see that and we see the profits. Uh, uh, we is not everyone, like I said, uh, still a lot of people, even our colleagues, need to be convinced. Um, uh, convincing is always the great challenge. Uh, speaking each other's language, I always say. Um, because I learned to speak the language of the architect whenever I uh, introduce um, uh, nature inclusive building. And I uh, try to convince them about the the profits of that, uh, how it becomes such a nice place to live if you add a little extra to a building. Speaking that language of the uh, urban planners as well, because they sometimes have totally different ideas. Uh, it should be uh, nice and tidy, um, lots of concrete. Uh, there can be a few trees there, but not too many, not too diverse. <laughs> um, yeah, 
so convincing and telling the story over and over again so that key other yes. key people um other key people such as important uh uh, urban planners within our company, uh, they start speaking that language. And uh, I work on uh, a few um, uh, big projects in Amsterdam, such as Eiberg. Um, and now the, the key people there, they speak about the importance of biodiversity and green and water, etc. Uh, in their area. I don't need to tell that story again. It's other people from uh, different disciplines. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's so, smaller so, than it spreads out, like the coronavirus, maybe. <laughs> I, I, I love the example, idea. Of, I know. <laughs> I love the idea of seeds are very easy to grow in Amsterdam uh, about ideas, and also speaking the same language. Uh, and I think Annika, you you touched on a number of the other questions that came up in the um in the chat. For example, the benefits uh, to developers in the private sector. Um, I I think we're we're quite tight on time. So if if you're happy to um we might we might send uh, some additional questions to you by email and we can we can very well share, share the answers but it's it's been a very inspiring talk so thank you thank, thank you, you. Very <laughs> yeah thank you so much for inviting me for this uh, that's been an honor as well and yeah thanks